narcissist says I'm emotionally unstable? I got a email from a woman and she wanted me to go over a scenario she's having with her girlfriend and it does apply to the male female dynamic as well and there's a lot of good nuggets in here about what happens when we're in a relationship with a narcissistic person how they come at the conversations there's also some good things to talk about in regards to just practicing radical self-respect too so I'm really glad this girl emailed me because there's a lot of good stuff to go over here and it covers a bunch of different topics. So jumping right in. I just got my autism diagnosis. I'm 21. So I met this person in August of last year. We started off as friends. Then we began to date, got feelings for each other, etc. Everything was nice. I felt safe with them. It felt like they understood me at the time. We could relate to each other and so on. Then this person became distant. I felt it so strongly and I was confused as to why. So let's stop that there. Now, this is something that a lot of women do in the talking stage, the dating stage. You'll be talking with someone, things seem like they're going great, and then all of a sudden the energy changes and they get distant. They don't seem to be responding to texts in the same manner they used to. And they change things up. And in my opinion, it's like a subconscious thing that they do to kind of test your attachment style. And the people that have an insecure or anxious avoidant attachment style, they kind of blunder in this situation where they get upset, they get needy, they get insecure. And I think it's something that subconsciously a lot of women do. Now, this is something that doesn't have to do with narcissism, but it is something that a lot of women do seem to do. So she felt it strongly and she was confused as to why. I ignored it and kept being like I always am because maybe it's just my anxiety. Sure, I could understandable. And this is someone that may have more of an anxious attachment style writing to me. And I backed up a little instead, if that makes sense. And yeah, that is the right thing to do in those scenarios. When a, when a girl gets a little distant, you give them the space and we focus on our own lives and do our own thing. The worst thing to do in those scenarios is chase them as they get distant because we will most likely just chase them out of our lives. But after a few days, she texted me, have I been distant to you? I think I have been. I'm sorry it wasn't my intention. Now to pause there, I'm not saying this woman has narcissistic personality disorder the girl that this girl's writing to me about, but she does seem to have some narcissistic traits. And it reminds me a lot about my ex that would say whenever she hurt me or I called her out on something, oh, it wasn't my intention to do that. They love to pull out that line. It wasn't my intention, wasn't my intention. But it's like, hey, let's not focus on the intentions. Let's focus on the actual result. How about that? So moving on. I see that now I didn't think about it deeper until now. My depression came back and everything is a mess right now. I don't know what I'm doing. I stopped feeling feelings for everyone, not just for you, etc. So the girl that texted me said to this girl, I answered, yes, a little. I felt it for a time now, but I didn't want to comment on it in case my feelings weren't right. Now, this is something that I think people who are neurodivergent might do. They not, they're not quite sure what the socially calibrated thing to do here is. And part of that is being neurodivergent, but part of it is also just being 21. So I totally get that. And we're going to have to make some mistakes, especially at that age. And this girl has a lot of great self-awareness, though, for being 21. I'm pretty impressed with her. But um, yeah, she was concerned her feelings weren't right. I accept that and understand, etc., etc. They fixed it. I think. Now everything has suddenly been on her terms, meeting up, talking, etc. That is another thing narcissists love to do. They make it all on their terms. When they want to talk, when they want to see you, yeah, we better be there. But when we want to talk, we want to hang out, we want to see them, yeah, suddenly it's not so important anymore. But it is super important when they want to. So. She has family issues, so I know a lot is going on in her life at the moment. But I began to see that I was making all the effort 
trying to help, give advice, problem solving. Now that kind of thing, I think it's a love language for a lot of people. They want to listen. They want to help. They want to give the effort because that's how they show they care. And here's the thing though. If we practice radical self-respect and we continue to do those things and they're not appreciated or valued, there comes a time when we should stop doing them because why are we going to do that for somebody if they're not appreciating it at all? And this is different than a covert contract where you do something with a subconscious or an unspoken um, desire to get a certain result. No, I, this is different than that scenario. But um, yeah, but I began to see is making all the effort and she didn't want to make an effort to see me anymore even if I gave her options. Remember, priorities, right? Everyone has their priorities and people see and make time for who they want to make time for. And if they're not making time for someone, they are not making us a priority. That speaks volumes. So it was like that for a while. And this is kind of like a devalue here as well at this point. This whole everything on her terms, not making any time for them. It's like she doesn't care. We had a fight before New Year's. I asked if I could come to her. She said she wanted that, but her sister said no because her sister doesn't feel very good. I understood, but was also sad because her dad had said no to me coming there, and now also her sister. She said it wasn't personal, but I took it personally anyway, and I said that to her. And I get it, at this point she's frustrated, so she's calling out the scenario, like, hey, I've been doing this, I want this, and your dad doesn't want me here, your sister doesn't feel good, and it's like, yeah, she's right, the other girl's not making an effort. So then she says, maybe I was wrong for feeling that, maybe I am dramatic, but it happened so many times by that point. Her dad said no so many times, almost isolating her from all of her friends, and now her sister too. And she became defensive, narcissistic trait, saying it was objective and that it wasn't personal. Under this argument, she called me emotionally unstable and that I belittle her, that my anxiety comes out in our relationship. And again, this is an example of gaslighting, really, flipping the script back onto you instead of understanding and acknowledging like her side of the street. She can't take any accountability, any responsibility, so she flips it back and says you're emotionally unstable. And it's not a cool thing to do, right? When two people are on the same team together, you have a space to talk honestly and openly about things. That's how it's supposed to go. But this gaslighting, flipping the script back on you, being called emotionally unstable, eh, not too good. Mm. Meanwhile, I've been listening to her problems for months of how depressed she is, how she doesn't feel her feelings anymore, and her family problems and more. I only said what I felt to her. And yet again, if when we share honestly, that's the result, gaslighting, flipping the script, that's a bad sign. Now, not what she had done wrong, because I know that isn't good to do to anyone. So I only said how I felt, and she made me feel like I was wrong for feeling these feelings. Yes, that's exactly what narcissistic people will do. They'll make you feel a little bit crazy, and that what you're thinking and feeling is wrong, and that it's all your fault, and has nothing to do with them, even when their actions, 99 times out of 100, prompted those actions and responses in you. So, let's go. Felt like she was trying to compete with me in some weird way. I would never say those things to her when she talks about her problems, but when she said those things, it really hurt me, because I have been there for her all this time, and this is how she feels. Now, the competition thing, that's another thing that you'll pick up on energy-wise with a narcissist. And this goes for same sex too, whether it's family or romantic or whatever. It's like there's a little competition and they're trying to always win the conversation. That's another little thing to, to pick up on and to watch out for. So because I've been there all this time and this is how she feels, that I'm emotionally unstable for finally bringing up a reoccurring problem. I don't know if I'm going crazy, 
and I'm wondering right now what I did wrong if what she said was true. I'm overthinking, overanalyzing at this point. And that's exactly what a narcissistic person will do. It'll make you think you're overanalyzing. It'll make you think you're overthinking. And they'll get you thinking you're a little more crazy, and they'll get you second-guessing yourself. That's a hallmark of narcissistic abuse, right? That's what they will do. Gaslight gets you feeling crazy, gets you overanalyzing, overthinking, getting so that you're always second-guessing your feelings and thoughts, and you're thinking like you're wrong. Trademark of what a narcissistic person will do. So they are also non-binary, and that has been hard for me to understand. I get it. I've read about it trying to understand, etc. Meanwhile, I haven't even lifted a finger to understand autism. That's exactly right. They're very selfish, and everything's about them, and if it doesn't serve them in some way to give them supply, they will not care. But this girl that emailed me, she is a little on the codependent side. She is doing all of those things. She's probably doing all of this to get some love and approval that she probably has a harder time giving herself. And that's understandable because I was that way too. I was that way severely. And I cringe to think about it, how I did it in my own life. But there's probably a little bit of codependency on her part too. And um, let's see. Yeah, meanwhile, they haven't lifted a finger to help her. Maybe I'm selfish. No, I don't think so. You're just correctly pointing out the discrepancies in effort here. My parents say I should move on. I stay in these situations for too long and trust others too much. Kind of codependency traits. I know I have people-pleasing problems, but I really liked them. Maybe it's all their family problems and depression that is making them this way. My autistic brain is trying to think logically about this situation. It's hard, though. So chances are the girl is using her father and her sister as an excuse to not see this girl. And those family problems are all just like a deflection so that she doesn't have to really deal with this girl. It's kind of how it seems to me. So she wanted to talk with me at her place to solve things. She was the one asking all the questions, even though I wanted to talk about how I felt, but I didn't get the chance. So the narcissist, it sounds like she put her on like a interrogation here. Narcissistic people do love to do that. They like to lead the conversation, get you in an interrogation, and then get you jumping from one hoop, or getting you jumping from one foot to the next, jumping through hoops, and they're leading and controlling the whole conversation, kind of like a conductor. And then the other more codependent person is jumping from one foot to the next, second-guessing themselves, and they can't get a word in, and they're making them feel crazy because the narcissistic person's gaslighting. So it felt like she was overanalyzing my words and trying to make me look bad. That's exactly what they'll do. They'll flip it all back on you, try to make you look bad, try to pick apart parts of your conversation and sentences that you never even thought about to, that it could be interpreted that way. But they pick and choose, and it's like a demon. They mix in the lies with the truth, but the end result is it gets you feeling crazy and second-guessing yourself and jumping through their hoops, too. So, it was a weird feeling. I understand that feeling well. Gaslighting and narcissistic abuse. I caught myself belittling myself in my responses. Yep, jumping through their hoops. I don't know where that came from. She made me feel like a failure and a bad friend. Yes. And this is why it's so important to practice radical self-respect and have a solid belief in ourselves. Because when we notice this, when we notice gaslighting and people flipping the script back on us, we see it for what it is. Gaslighting and abuse. And this is kind of what happens, though, when we don't have a good belief in ourselves, we are more susceptible to gaslighting. When we're not super confident, we're susceptible to what other people have to say about us. And that is part of being susceptible to gaslighting, right? When we care about what someone else thinks, this is especially true in a romantic setting, but we care about what they think, we care about their opinion, so it helps them, it pushes us through their hoops a little bit, 
And it's because, though, we are susceptible in a way. And we got to have a really strong belief in ourselves in order to be gaslighting proof, right? That's our side of the street when it comes to narcissistic abuse and gaslighting. Believing in ourselves so much, having the confidence so that we're able to recognize when the script is being flipped back on us and we can see it for what it is. So, she said my thinking is black and white, while in my head I see all perspectives of a situation. Black and white thinking, of course, is what narcissists do, and some borderlines, so that sounds a lot like projection on her part. When we spoke, she said we can only speak for 45 minutes, that, and that annoyed me. Very bad manners. I just couldn't get myself to communicate my truth of how she had been treating me. I felt so judged already. Yes, so it sounds like she's walking on eggshells a little bit, and she's not being validated for her thoughts and opinions, and she's making... The girl's making her feel like her opinions and thoughts are wrong. Narcissistic abuse. So when she was walking me to the bus, my feelings came out. Oh, excuse me, I skipped the sentence. I just couldn't get myself to communicate my truth of how she had been treating me. I felt so judged already. When she was walking me to the bus, my feelings came out. I didn't care by that point. I said she doesn't have time for me right now. That she has other priorities. That I'm not feeling like a part of her life right now. That I understand why, but it's hurting me. That I give and give, and I don't get anything in return. I also said it doesn't feel like she likes me in that way anymore, since she said she lost feelings for everything a while back. I said that everything felt pushed from her side. I almost started crying. She just stood there and said, So you don't trust me? That I like you? I do like you. And she said that in a very non-empathetic way, we know narcissistic people don't have very much empathy. And she said, I know you think actions speak louder than words, blah, blah, blah. And again, if she really did like her, she would validate her feelings a little bit. She would say, okay, I understand that you feel these things. And I'm going to try to work with you here so that you don't feel those things anymore. And we can work together on this and give and take a little bit. But that's not what the girl did at all. She just said, oh, I like you, and then proceeded to kind of belittle her a little bit about the, oh, I know you think actions speak louder than words. Well, yeah, the girl is right. Actions do speak louder than words, and people's actions always display what their priorities are. So, I told her we can't date anymore. Woo! That was good. That we should just be friends. She accepted that and said, but you are my safe place in school. All about her, all about her, and what she got out of it. She said, we aren't ready for a relationship. So this girl, a lot of narcissistic traits in there, and it's all about her. She's only concerned now that she lost her safe place in school. But this is an important breakdown here of what narcissistic individuals do. They get you off balance second-guessing yourself, jumping from one foot to the next, thinking that your feelings are wrong, having to walk on eggshells, and just overall having it be a very unpleasant feeling and not feeling safe at all. And these kinds of scenarios, they happen all the time. But what is the radical self-respect way of this? So this girl is neurodivergent, she's on the spectrum, and she's people-pleasing and has a little codependency too. So my suggestion to her would be, get okay on your own. And I know that's super hard, especially when you're young and the hormones are raging. But the better we are on our own, the more easily we'll recognize when we're being gaslit. We'll notice the red flags of these kinds of things. Now this girl didn't mention much about love bombing. Maybe there was that she didn't mention to me. But there certainly was the devalue. And there certainly was her not giving the effort and making excuses not to see her. And that's when it's up to us. We got to know what we're worthy of. We got to know our value. And if someone's going to act like that, hey, move on, right? We don't need to put up with that. We don't need to put up with gaslighting. We don't need to put up with getting the flip, the script flipped back on us. We don't need to do that. But part of this comes from getting a good belief in ourselves, right? taking care of mental health issues if they are there, building our confidence, 
getting hobbies, and doing things on our own. And when we're more happy and single, we're more likely to attract the person at a good place. But there's always, it always takes two to tango here, right? There's never just one unhealthy person in a relationship. So this girl's codependency maybe allowed for this to happen a little bit, where if she worked on that a little more, she would have put her foot down and stopped it. But again, this girl's 21, so she is very young. So I understand that, that when I was 21, I was completely clueless. And this girl is way more advanced than I was at her age. So I give her a lot of credit for that. And she's got a lot of self-awareness for being 21 too. I give her a lot of credit for that as well. And for even ending it and saying we shouldn't date anymore. That's also a great step because that's how you break out of codependency. You stand up for yourself and you say, you know what? I can stand on my own two feet and I can be good on my own. So I was super proud of her at the end there. And we, she took us on a ride there where it was painful for me to read some of that because it reminded me a lot of myself as a younger person. And yeah, I cringe. I cringe thinking of how codependent I was and what a people pleaser I was. So to see that girl go through all that and then stand up for herself in the end, that was super cool. And so again, my suggestion to her would be work on the mindset, work on the hobbies, and know your worth, right? You don't deserve to be treated that way. If you're going to be giving effort as part of your love language and listening, yeah, you deserve some reciprocation. You deserve someone that's going to appreciate that. Because if we give and we give and we give, and it's not appreciated, then that's on us. That's the codependency coming out. And that's when we got to stop and say, okay, if our actions and our love language isn't being appreciated, we got to stop. Because to continue to give anyway would be to disrespect ourselves. So comment below everyone what you think about this video. Do you have a situation that was like this? Can you relate to this girl's story? I would love to hear it in the comments section. So if you got this far, please remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell if you would like to get notified when I make videos about narcissism, BPD, mindset, uh, addiction, supplements, mental health, all of those things. So with that, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.